The Nigerian Center for Disease Control says a sharp rise of 32 or 324 percent in the number of COVID-19 cases reported in the country within one month. Is there a fifth wave or not? Also on the breakfast with victory over the indomitable Lions, Super Falcons secure World Cup ticket to Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Don't forget we're also going through the national dailies looking at the biggest stories and analyzing them with our guest analyst today on the program. It's a beautiful well, Friday morning. We're back with the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful morning to you. All right, of course, so we have interesting conversations for you with a sporty flavor on what is uh, a beautiful Friday. Yeah, and of course, um, as usual, we start off with our trending segment. Uh, Mercy, uh, sort of a landmark um, ruling, some would say. Um, you know, when it comes to such cases in Nigeria, we do not have, you know, conclusion. You know, uh, women are not as protected as they should, and that's why we have a lot of um, uh, women's, uh, you know, groups of women's rights advocacy in the country. Um, it was refreshing to those, you know, who had been clamoring for something like this for a long time to see that Baba Jesha, the popular Nollywood actor, uh, had been sentenced to 16 years um, in prison uh, by a sexual offenses court in Lagos State. The images of the man in court, someone who uh, is a celebrity, the entire public, you know, who watch movies know him. I'm sure you've seen one or two of his flicks, you know, here and there, you know, if you don't watch movies at all. Uh, it, it was it was quite a, a, a humiliation for uh, this gentleman to be there. But of course, you know, a relief, like I said, for a lot of persons who had been advocating uh, for, uh, you know, the rights of women and the punishment of sexual offenders. Now, the background story, of course, you know, Princess, the comedian, uh, put out a, you know, a, a complaint and a plea to the public and released a CCTV footage of Baba Jesha. Um, you know, at the time, it was allegedly uh, abusing a 16-year-old girl who was in her care. And this uh, video went viral all over the internet. Uh, the likes of Iyabo, um, the older actress, went, went out all out to support uh, Princess and, you know, demand that uh, some action be taken as far as uh, uh, Baba Jesha was concerned. And uh, this has led to where we are right now. It's not a, a, a total a, a 16 year stretch. You had six counts, uh, count one, count two, count three, uh, count four, five and six. Uh, the, the trial judge not finding Baba Jesha guilty on the first count and sixth count but finding him guilty on the second, third, fourth, and fifth counts. And therefore, this means that um, he was going to serve uh, 16 years. You look at the first count of five years, you look at three years, four years, and so on for the remaining counts. Uh, but the, the defense counsel, the one who represented Babai Jesha in prison, uh, asked the, the judge to be lenient with um, uh, Babai Jesha. In other words, pleaded for clemency, uh, uh, saying that, uh, you know, Babai Jesha should be allowed to run the 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 sentence in the years concurrently uh, means at the same time uh, the prosecution counsel also did not object to the plea of the defense counsel and said well Baba Jesha had not been known uh, to have previously uh, been convicted of any such offense before you know so he would not object to the plea for clemency by the defense counsel and the judge approved that um, Baba Jesha be allowed to run the term concurrently um, so while some people are saying it's 16 years online and no social media, he's going to spend five years in jail. Yeah. Well, um, it, it's been a lot, just like you have rightly mentioned. I mean, you have some people who are super excited. Nigerians have uh, really expressed, um, you know, joy and saying, hey, justice has been meted. And some people would say, we don't have laws. The laws are not functional. But you do not pray, you know, to be caught up with the law at some point. And... It's more like, hey, you know, uh, that's a process, you know, with the judicial system. Because over time, some persons have actually lost uh, hope in the judicial system in terms of meting out, you know, justice. Or what have you interpreting the law uh, to its letter without having it been twisted by powerful men? But um, uh, so one for this particular case is not that uh, 
you know, um, justice has been served, but it's that it's a progress for the judicial system. And that's on the one hand. On the other hand, also, it's also um, a message, you know, to every other person who's out there. I hope that this might just serve as a deterrent, you know, to those who are engaging and acting in this particular act and behavior. So, um, yes, this should be a deterrent because that's what the law does when people actually uh, commit crime or uh, do things and then they go away with it. They just go away with it without any repercussion, any sort of punishment and all of that. What it does is enc encourages, you know, the same act and practice. And people are saying that, you know, with this one, then it would just be that um, it would serve as a warning. But we hope that um, those who are out there would also learn the lessons. If you're in this uh, habit or if you're engaged in such an act, it would be a time for you to have a, a rethink. But it's also important that we protect ourselves. And the issue of you know, sexual assault and harassment and what have you, it's not just limited you know, to um, <clears throat> the female uh, in terms of a gender now. It cuts across. I mean, the boys, the, the girls, the men and the women, everyone, uh, we ought to respect ourselves and treat ourselves with dignity, basically, and that's it. But away from that, we're going to be looking at uh, another one quite interesting as Nigerians react to President Muhammad Buhari's, um, you know, advice. So the President Muhammad Buhari uh, has been in Daura prior to the Salah period, and so the holidays are over now. Today is Friday, and that was in his hometown, Katsina. Uh, but in, in the course of all of this, there were a lot of, uh, you know, activities that went on and part of it was more like a communication, having a chat with the people. Now, he implored parents to inculcate right values in children, including the deep fear of God, respect for constituted authorities and living a purposeful life through a continuous education. The president charge the youth to seek education, not for government jobs, which are available, but to arm themselves with skill and ability to fight poverty and to meet the needs of the 21st century. And that's the part that got to Nigerians. We'll definitely get to that one. He was also um, saying that um, there should be time where people are giving to coaching uh, future leaders. And that's when he was at the palace uh, where he paid that homage. Now, with basic knowledge of moral values, uh, as fast as ch the world is changing, it should be driven by new technology uh, so that, you know, these future leaders can be competitive and demanding. And who would not agree with the president? According to him, he said, I was locked up for more than three years after leading the country. At that point, I realized that I told my children that you are not what is what is in your head, not what you have acquired in life. My focus has always been on training the children to be relevant wherever they find themselves. I told my children, particularly the girls, that they can only get married after getting a first degree. And they already know that I am not leaving anything for anyone to inherit. My greatest legacy is... Uh, to my children is to ensure that they are properly educated. He said that um, a younger children should be guided and thought history as they would be able to, it would be able to, you know, be patriotic if they are taught history, uh, then they are sure of being patriotic, responsible, respectful, and having that thorough understanding of their background. So whatever they have to do uh, would be you know, the sense of history would actually help guide them and ensuring that they do not make mistakes. Now, he said, we should ensure that the children get proper education. The knowledge they acquire should not be towards getting government jobs and what have you. I mean, it feels like that, you know, part of education has been more very emphasized. But we need to move away because it's a lengthy one. I mean, if you want to catch up with that, uh, the president ver verified Twitter handle, uh, you can find all of the conversation. But what has gotten Nigerians talking is the part where the, the president and said seek education and the question is you're asking people to seek education uh, not for government jobs but you know to uh, be able to uh, compete with the world and what have you at a time where ASU is on strike what an irony what education should I be seeking at this point where 
you know, the, the higher institution have been on strike for over six months and counting and nothing has happened. Mr. President, what exactly are we talking about? At a time where we constantly see pictures on the internet popping of, uh, you know, the ruling class, the elites, whether you have the current or the past, mm. uh, having their kids, I mean, no one say you don't, you, 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 don't, you don't have to send your kids abroad, but you see these children, their kids you see, outside see, of see, Nigeria. This was presidential spokesman's handle that put this out, a verified handle. Yes. yes, and so, so you, you now have, um, you know, these children out and you see all of those pictures, mm. they go out and maybe in the United yeah. Kingdom, in the United States, and it's getting a lot of persons concerned because you ask yourself how many persons can afford, you know, this education outside? What's the problem uh, of our educational system? Why mm. don't we have our leaders having their kids, mm -hmm. you know, school uh, in Nigeria? Is it that the educational system in Nigeria is not good enough or mm. the structural? Why do we have to patronize you know, the educational system outside of the country. That's really the part that got to a lot of persons. But most of the things that the president said, really, you know, very true and very important, that um, the values, uh, you know, we should inculcate our kids, our children, with all of these values because it would go a long way, um, you know, in helping them as a people to become better humans in a society. And, of course, they can compete globally. But the question would always come back to whether or not uh, the leaders himself, including the president, has lived an example as a president and as a father. Yeah. So, so you know, th th this is another classic case of uh, 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 taking taking the message, you know, leaving the message as they call it, or taking the the you know, should, would Nigerians take the message without uh, you know looking at the messenger? So th there are two ways of looking at this. Is what he's saying true? Message is it true? Of course he said. He right. said. So, you know, that's one approach. You can look at what he's saying. If it's true, you take the advice, or the advice, rather, and uh, we forget about the fact that it's a president who's superintended over months of ASU strike. Um, but it's hard for a lot of people in today's Nigeria, <laughs> with all the political energy flying around, to take this message without the messenger. And, of course, when you're in a politically sensitive position, a uh, crucial position like uh, the presidency, and when you give such an uh, uh, advice, it will be, or advice, it will be, uh, uh, you know, of course, it will be x rayed alongside your policies, alongside your performance. You know, when you talk about education, when you talk about skills and competence, you know, job creation, blah, 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 people will not listen to you because they're not robots. They also have feelings, they have um, emotions, they have what they're going through. You know, Messi, we work in the media. You know, we, 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 we interact with people on a daily basis, both on air and online. And uh, we get to sometimes manage, you know, the, 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 uh, the emotions of people. And you're aware, Messi, that sometimes some things some people are saying, you know, sometimes it may not make sense. You know, they may just come out and you just, but you feel, you feel the emotion. You know that people are, this person is making this comment you know, because of what he or she is going through, you have to put them to yourself in their shoes. So right now, whilst it's you and I can can separate the uh, separate the uh, separate the the messenger from the message, we can also put ourselves in the shoes of Nigerians who are, you know, responding, reacting to what the president is saying in a not so favorable manner. You know, people are tired of their kids staying at home, and they're not ready to take advice on education advice on training your children from a president who has superintended over their kids staying at home for months. You know, so it's understandable. It's understandable. I think uh, Mr. President has given good advice, but um, of course, you need to match your words with what? With action. <laughs> it sounds like you're in the classroom. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, um, this one, uh, people have been looking forward to it, you know, have been uh, talking about it, have been asking when is the NMPP going to release the name of their substantive presidential running mate or the vice presidential candidate. You know, they had already put out a name before, a Lagos lawyer, blah, blah, blah. But everyone knew, and Kwan had said himself before, that's a presidential candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party, Rabbi Musa Kwan So he had said that, uh, you know, somebody else is going to replace the person there who was there already as a placeholder. We've seen this tactic being used by uh, the All Progressives Congress, Ashwaj Bola Tinubu. Uh, we've seen it used by the Labour Party, uh, presidential candidate Peter B. And now we're seeing this placeholder 
tactics being used by NNPP as well. Well, the New Nigeria People's Party, which is one of the third force party, or should we call them fourth force, <laughs> uh, announced yesterday, July 20, uh, that uh, it had, uh, yesterday, July 14, that it had uh, chosen, you know, the presidential candidate had chosen the man you see on your screen, uh, Bishop Isaac Idahosa, as his running mate for the 2023 general elections. I don't know if we have those, those videos. Um, <laughs> you know, but, but interestingly, it made a big splash in social media yesterday because of um, the sort of the antics or let me say the actions of Bishop Isaac Idahosa. I mean, you're a pastor, you know, of a, a, a big church. Your videos will be around because, you know, this is part of ministry today. Um, and the videos of Isaac Idahosa, you know, uh, you know, laying hands on some people who attended his program, uh, it's gone all over the internet. You know, at one particular point, one video, he used his head to to uh, transfer the power of the anointing, you know. And so whilst, you know, you would normally see a pastor lay hands, he was using his head to do the laying. So he would go to the person who is to receive the anointing and he will, he will do this. You know, like you're heading a, a football, the person will fall down. Another one, the person will fall down, of course, will be shaking, you know. Another person will fall down. There's one guy who did like this, did like this, person fell down. You know, so some supporters of... Um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the Labour Party online and being, you know, mocking, you know, making mocking the whole situation, saying, um, uh, "Is this a Nigeria? Is this a person you want to be your next vice president?" In another video, uh, Bishop Isaac Idahosa has several men in his church, you know, trying to drag him back. He was maybe trying to show them the power that he possesses. You understand? Trying to drag him back. You know, as they dragged him back, they were the ones who fell down. They tried to push him in the fork, and they fell down. You know, but, but I mean, this is ministry. It's um, he just you know his 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 religion, his belief, you know, and all that, uh, which maybe you know we shouldn't look at. His competence should be what we should be talking about. But if you go online, a lot of people were <laughs> were laughing at the situation, saying, "Is this the person you want to be your next vice president?" But um, I, 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 apart from this, I think that is quite a competent, uh, well-read gentleman, a very successful person. Uh, he is the presiding bishop of the and senior pastor of um, the Godfest Ministry, uh, popularly known as Illumination Assembly, in Lekki, you know, Lekki Light Center, in Aja area of Lagos State. Mercy, I know you visited Aja once. Once, are you are you a member of his church? I need to know so I know what I say. I'll change the way I'm talking about this thing. Go ahead. Okay, I should go ahead. I'm safe, right? <laughs> so I mean, he started the ministry 25 years ago. He's going to grow his ministry. Um, over 25 years of dedicated ministry work, you know, to this level. He started the ministry in Mina, Niger State, and then he has been able to grow it such that they have their church now in Aja, Lagos, you know, it's such a big church. He's a well-known uh, pastor. Uh, he's been married to his wife, Chrissy, for 22 years. Uh, they both blessed with two lovely children, Chris Bell and Usagi. Um, he was born to a family of six. He's a third child. He is a qualified mechanical engineer. Uh, from Edo State. He's from Edo State. Um, that's why you see the name Idahosa. <laughs> I don't know if he's related well, you know, to the uh, the popular Bishop uh, Idahosa, Benz Idahosa of blessed memory. But in 1985, he went to Soul Clare Bible College. Uh, he was decorated by the Lagos State Government, by Lagos State Government, as one of the mayors of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, LASMA. Um, he received a United Nations Peace Ambassadorial Award. I don't really harp on that one because I'm still trying to understand where that award is coming from. You understand? I have never seen the United Nations tweet about it before. You know, um, but I see people get that award and call themselves ambassador. We'll, we'll investigate that. You know, but he was given that for his immense contribution to the growth of humanity and peaceful coexistence through evangelism and Pentecostalism. Um, so that's that. You know, he has a, a PhD in theology. All right, he has a PhD in theology. So he, he's well read. If you want to talk about academics, he has gone to school, he has read a lot of books to have a PhD in theology. Well, um, apart from that, uh, I think that's why you would have uh, Rabbi Yukwanko so saying the reason he was picked and he will be officially unveiled to Nigerians on Monday, all things being equal. It's because of his integrity, his track record of, um, you know, the fact that he has faith in Nigeria. And uh, basically, all the interesting things that you want to look out for, you know, in leadership. 
but it would be totally on the electorates to decide whether or not um, um, you know they make it that they become uh, a pair at the end of the day, the president and the vice president. But one thing that also stands out is the fact that at a time where you have political parties not being very sensitive, uh, you know, to the issues of uh, religion and you know tribe and what have you, it feels like you know the NPP. That's the NNPP has actually showed something differently because this is one thing that uh, that you know the APC has been held for. And so, if you look at the ticket, is it a Muslim Muslim ticket? So you find a Muslim Christian ticket, um, which is something that some people uh, are really worried about. The fact that some political parties have been carrying on without being very considerate to other religion and to other region. At the end of the day, sounds like uh, you know rhyme there. But um, like I said, fingers crossed. Let's see how all of this pans out for yes, the. Yes. In, indeed, the indeed. Um, it's it's also uh, like you said, time to look at the, um, the 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 motive behind you know choosing a running mate. You've had time to look at Shetima. You had opportunity to look at Okowa. You've also had the opportunity to look at uh, uh, Dati Baba Ahmed. Look what what is what was the thinking behind the selection. Of, of these running mates. So each of the presidential candidates, they have their own strategy. They have their own permutation, you know, Shetima being chosen by, by Tinwo because of um, his, uh, his track record and his, um, uh, the depth of his political base in the north, north, uh, northeastern part of the country. Um, some saying, okay, because of uh, the fight against Boko Haram, he is also well positioned to to be able to bring a resolution to that situation. Uh, you look at uh, the PDP and the choice of Okowa, he's from Delta State, but he's also Delta Igbo. So both ways for, for, for Atiku. And of course, he's not wiki. As Atiku said, he needs somebody um, who will not be giving him sleepless nights. Um, but I know wiki has his own thoughts on that. You know, uh, you look at um, the reasons why Peter Obi chose that. He's talked about those already. So for Kwan Kwaso, uh, we can we can we can speculate we can we can analyze you know but we don't know for real what is in his mind but some anal analysts have said that you know looking at the the clamor for Christian Muslim ticket and all that apart from the qualifications of Isaac Dahosa he may also be using this as a way of reaching out uh, to the Christian community just like um, uh, Buhari did with uh, the choice of um, Tunde Bakari all those years in the CPC you know like um, uh, Tinibu said. Uh, Olule, he tried the other ones, Olule, and before he said uh, Emiloko, you know, mm -hmm. Buhari had kept trying and trying. And Buhari still deployed that same uh, tactic in choosing someone like uh, Yemi Oshibajo. There are several names, a few names on the table he could have chosen from. Uh, Oshibajo, of course, a pastor uh, with the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and that sort of appealed uh, to the Christian base in the country. So maybe, maybe, maybe Kwan Kwasu is also looking at that. You know, it's a Muslim, Muslim versus Muslim ticket conversation, Muslim Christian ticket conversation. And also, some are saying, hey, we don't want this. You know, it's the time of the South to produce the next president. If you like, bring Pope uh, Francis, you know, bring Pope Michael Ratzinger back. If it is not a Southern presidency, we are not accepting it. But, you know, you never can tell. Now, one person who has um, responded to this is... Um, uh, a former aide to the president, uh, talking about President Muhammad Buhari uh, on new media. Uh, he had to resign to go contest an election in primary. Bashir Ahmed. Bashir Ahmed reacted on Twitter. He's saying that um, Nigerians who want to vote along uh, religion and ethnic lines have a lot of options to choose from with the Dahosa's emergence as Kwankwaso's running mate. Uh, he said those who prefer to vote for competence uh, also have their own choice during the presidential election. Say in other words, it's about competence, not about the, uh, uh, the the religion of a person who is a candidate. You know, so these are some of the debates going on online. We we'll see what happens in the coming weeks and months as we we coast towards the presidential election. But now it's time for us to coast down, like you normally say, mm -hmm. <laughs> and move on to other things. All right, that's it this morning. Uh, we take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of our national dailies. Jide Johnson joins the conversation. Please stay with us.